Welcome, everyone! Beards, I am Takeshi Yamato, the Art Master, joining our host, the House Go Gamer. Yo. This is our last primer video of the Starfleet Command races. The Interstellar Con Today we cover the Interstellar Concordium. The Interstellar Concordium is effectively the dark mirror to the Federation in every single way. They have no prime directive, they don't care who you are. If they deem you a threat and decide to pacify you, you will be forcibly absorbed into the Interstellar Concordium. Sounds familiar. Yeah. Resistance is futile, anyone? Yeah. Only they're not quite as bad as the Borg. Well, they're like a Proceeding. poor copy of the Borg and the Dominion. Yeah, a poor copy of the Borg. A, a poor... A... a a poor hybrid of the Borg, the Dominion, and the Terran Empire. We serve uh, I will go into their governmental stuff in the lore dock. However, for our purposes, these vessels come from the galactic periphery, pretty close to the edge of the galaxy. Well, yes. edge of the galaxy near the galactic barrier. Yes. Yeah. The barrier surrounds the whole goddamn galaxy, top to bottom. Mm -hmm. In every direction. Yep. Yeah. So... The ISC was brought for into, the, into galactic affairs by the Organians. We're getting a little sick and tired of the galaxy being at war, thanks to them going away for a while to deal with something else. Yeah, they had a... Th there was a threat which called them away from Organia. Everyone else started fighting in their wake, and they came back, and they're like, what the F is going on with all of you people? Alright, screw this. Here. You can deal with... Here. We'll let... We'll let these people deal with you. The Interstellar Concordium Starfleet formerly known as the Interstellar Pacification Force, is very heavily armed, very effective in combat. However... <laughs> these guys all rely on formations. None of these ships are designed to operate Vessel alone. Construction complete. Right. For example, the ISC frigate, seen here, is most commonly seen escorting larger vessels, such as the ISC Advanced Destroyer, the ISC Standard Destroyer, and of course, the poster child of the ISC Navy. The Heavy Cruiser? Yep. Yeah. The Heavy Cruiser is basically basically their equivalent of the Constitution class. Though it doesn't look like it. It might look bigger, but... Yeah. And the design... The <sighs> I can only imagine that the design of Interstellar Concordium ships l provided some inspiration for ships like the Sabre and specifically and especially what Ron calls the go-kart. Because it is a go-kart. Yeah. A go-kart with a V12 engine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's going to break the engine and the frame. Yep. Regardless, the ISC's very echelon formations are highly effective, especially when paired with their weapon systems. How are all energy styles? Yes. They use high-energy disruptor <laughs> beam arrays, high-energy disruptor beam cannons, and plasma torpedoes. 
TMP, TOS TMP style plasma torpedoes. Yes, or as I as I have picked up from a previous I, from another group of friends, the Red Death torpedo. It's a fitting term. However, the ISE's real main weapon is not the Red Death Torpedo, or the Green Death Torpedo, or even the Orange Death Torpedo. It is the Plasmatic it... Pulsar device. Yes. But look at this, a bunch of ships that can serve as targets. We serve at important. Relocate. Now, the I... <laughs> The Plasmatic Pulsar device is a very long-range weapon, and cannot be fired with an aid range of 40,000 kilometers. Yeah. That's a range of four for SFC, SFB players. That's right, single-digit numbers are literally tens of thousands of kilometers. Yep. That might pose some problems for uh, certain other people wanting to adapt certain other things. But that's not my problem. Yeah. Now, the Plasmatic Pulsar device is a long-range weapon that uses a targeting beam to focus its weapon onto a target and unleashes searing waves of plasma onto multiple shield facings. Yeah. Unfortunately, Star Trek Adventures does not have a similar system akin to this. So it works like a Hellborn light with longer range. Yeah. We gave it the spread effect, basically meaning it essentially deals two hits. Now, we have no idea what happened to the ISE after the War of Pacification. They lose. Yeah. However, in general, it is believed that they did not exactly uh, have a fun time. Yeah. It is believed... Yeah. As we mentioned in our campaign guide video, we believe they went they went back to their home territory and licked their wounds and slowly built their forces back up. They might have made their own technological advancements, but they probably weren't. They probably didn't manage to get, get quite as far up in the tech tree as uh, all the other races did. Well, the war of pacification did involve bombing the living crap out of every they had. Yeah. So. Well, so. While for most ships in the time frame of the general war would have appropriate stat mo stat values. So like uh, for 48 points plus or minus scale modifiers. They probably, only, after that, they probably only gained one, they would probably only gain one system point every, let's say, 25 to 50 years. I'm not entirely sure which, but this would also, this would apply both to new space frames and to refitting existing space frames. And there wouldn't be too many of those. Yeah. And we are, and I also consider another thing from the campaign guide. I brought forth the possibility that they might ally with the Dominion during the Dominion War in exchange for a promise to rule over some of the other Alpha Quadrant powers after the Dominion after the Dominion ISC Alliance had claimed victory. And... We all know how that ended. 
Yeah, we all know how the Dominion War ended. And even if the Dominion had won, I am not sure the Founders would have honored that agreement because no matter no matter how long lived the ISC's leaders may be, there's still a bunch of solid. Like there's still a bunch of solids. And we all know how the founders view solids. Well, with the exception of the org. Yeah. Uh, Star Trek Star Trek Picard season three. Picard probably their place in the Totem Yeah. Yeah, the Borg are probably the only race of solids that the, found, that the Founders fear. I mean, the Collective, at their weakest, made the most arrogant changelings we've ever seen quake in their boots. Indeed. So... I'm sorry for uh, DS9 fans out there. The Borg will always be at the top of the villainy totem pole. Get yeah. used to it. Yeah. Uh, as, as, and as I've said in other <laughs> videos about the Borg, if the Borg found themselves in another universe, they would quickly find themselves at the top of that villainy totem pole as well. Seriously. The Borg are the... This is... I, apologies for the... Uh, off-topicness of this has gone through, but... The Borg are the ultimate... I, the Borg are basically the ultimate threat any universe could face. I doubt even StarCraft would get off of that... I would may do well against them. I doubt uh, I doubt that Warhammer would have a fun time with that. I don't think anybody's going to be having a fun time with the Borg. Yeah. But you know uh, they're going to be having fun with the ISE? Yeah. Us. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's get to working on stats. So, what did we come up with as the... Well, since they, since they never operate alone, communications is probably one of, their, one of their two main systems. Indeed it is. Larger ship, more comms, among other things. Yeah. What was the other one that we picked out? Shielding, I think? And so, structure again. Well, you'd have to look through the docks. I'm just breaking presumptions. It's been yeah. a while since we did the uh, originals. Yeah, let's see. Um, frigate was... Fr let's see. Okay, that frigate. Destroyer. Uh, I think we... Uh, let's see. Um, okay. Star Cruiser. Um, let's see. Not seeing much commonality point, but I would say... Well, we, we treated them as sort of a mirror of the Federation. And the Federation did engines and sensors. I'd say maybe comms and engines. That would be I'm sorry that we're I'm mostly focusing on this mirror federation class. I like it. I really wish I could play with it. <laughs> yep. Terst Delner Concordium Starships. 
favor communications and engines primarily as they require extensive coordination to maintain their formations and are also very at very manu maneuverable. Okay, now weapons loadouts, disruptors, and plasma torpedoes. Stellar Concordium. This makes me sad. I really wish that thing was in torpedo range. I'd like seeing those things go off. And to all use disruptor weaponry and plasma torpedoes. And now we get to the common special rules. This one, I'm not sure quite how common it is, but some of their some of their ships are equipped with subspace jump drives. This is well, basically, it's a form of FTL where I. We're going to need to do a video on various FTL types and the rules for how they work. Warp drive versus quantum slipstream versus jump drive versus anything else. For now, let's just say that while I that warp drive as the basic form of FTL the more power you put into, uh, the more power you use when going to warp, the faster you go. With a jump drive, it's instantaneous travel, but the more power you put in, the farther you go. Next up is the plasmatic pulsar de device. This comes in both regular and heavy forms. They are they have medium range, a stress rating, a, the they both have a rating of medium range. Basic has a stress rating of scale plus security plus 1, heavy has scale plus security plus 2. And they also have the spread quality. Anything they also have hyper-focused plasma torpedoes. This is what we've used to represent the Red Death torpedo. Plasma, plasma torpedoes, using this talent, when using this talent, I will, this special rule, the ship's plasma torpedoes get high yield. With Gorn ships, they've had, the Gorn had other types of plasma torpedoes, so we said they could switch to Red Death torpedoes as a minor action. But Romulan and some Romulan ships can do that too. But for Interstellar Concordium, they just have straight up hyper focus. I, I, they just they don't have any other plasma torpedo type. All they have is hyper focus. The last special rule, though I think only one ship type has this is the interspatial rift generator By your this does exactly what you think it does yeah it require and it requires a reason plus science task with a difficulty of four assisted by the ship's sensors plus science if successful it generates a portal into another universe which lasts for about five minutes Ships from either side of the portal may pass through during this time. 
in Starfleet Command. They usually use this to pull pull ships out from the mirror universe. It is foolish to resist. You could easily do this to pull out ships from, say, Battlestar Galactica. Yes, we do have some videos of those waiting of Galactica ships waiting in the wings. Or Babylon 5, or even Star Wars, which we're going to have to deal with eventually. Yeah. Spoiler yeah. alert, it's not going to end well, but it's not our fault. Yeah. You want to blame the anybody? Blame the goddamn... Blame the people who wrote it. We're yeah, the scale it, okay? system... The scale system for Star Trek Adventures seems to... Uh, is primarily based on crew size, part, partly because, well, it's partly based, primarily based on crew size, it seems. Mainly because of things like automation and such. And complexity of the ship. Oh no, I was just gonna go talk about their weapon systems and technology. We're gonna complain huh. and yeah. You know what I'm gonna do? Go blame someone else, because I'm not the one who wrote wrote all the war. Yeah. I'm not responsible. Go blame someone else. Yeah. Yeah. We are just the best. We are basically okay. just the messengers yeah, okay. and the interpreters. We are not the ones to blame for any Power issues you may have with what we come up with. Power all energy cells. <sighs> anyway. That is... I, uh, tangents aside, that is the Interstellar Concordium. Oh, uh, one last thing. I didn't... We didn't get around to... We didn't fi get around to this in the campaign guide, so... What would be... What, how would a GM be... A, how would a Game Master for Star Trek Adventures play the Interstellar Concordium? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Yeah. Housecoat Gaming and Take signing off. See ya.